Hello everybody, this is September and I'm checking in from the test server as well as the Thunderwing server today. In this video I would like to talk about the down and dirty bullet points about changes coming in 4.0 for ArcAge. I'm going to do my very best not to over explain things as I tend to do that uh, and I'm just going to try to give you the information just straight up as I've seen it here on the current build on the test server. So getting right into it, first I must point out this particular build is not the latest build for 4.0 and things still have a chance to change and likely stuff is going to be added before 4.0 even comes out to the live servers. Now many of you guys are aware that there was a lot of challenges even getting this build live on the uh, test server. And because of that, Tryon has actually pushed the release date of 4.0 from December 6th to December 13th. Roland, let's kick this off with the release of Maelstrom. Right. Crawlin, what are we doing? What are we talking about? Um, so where would you like to start, Muzzy? I would like to start with... <laughs> I knew you were going to do this. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, we did mention that we were going to be releasing on the 6th. Uh, however... Uh, that's been moved. So um, the Maelstrom release date has been postponed one week to the 13th. Um, so it will uh, release the following Wednesday. Uh, and we can go into detail on why that's the case. And finally, I also need to point out that this video is going to have absolutely minimal information about Luna Gems. However, I am going to speak about Lunarite where it is appropriate. Okay, so here are the topics that I'm going to cover in this video. I'm going to talk about the new arenas, obsidian crafting, dungeons, UI, larceny, treasure maps, sunken treasure, shop changes like the vocation, honor, and the curios medals, warriors medals, merit badges, guild changes, food and drink removals, as well as salvaging, and finally, trade pack changes. So the first thing that I want to speak about is in 4.0, we're going to have two new arenas. One is actually a permanent arena, and that is called Blood Salt Bay. Basically what happens here is you're pitted as a team of five people against three other teams. So four teams of five people. This is a cross-server arena, and you fight against each other in a boat-only uh, battle arena with the ultimate goal of collecting as many souls as possible. There's a lot more information about the Blood Salt Bay Arena. The next event is also called Water Gun Festival, or at least that's what it's called in this build. This is a limited time arena where you're pitted against your fellow players with water guns, and you have exactly four skills. The goal here, of course, like all arenas, or most all arenas, is to get the most kills you can within five minutes. Next up, I would like to talk about the Obsidian changes. So in recent past Tryon live streams, they've talked about resilling Obsidian and hinting that you will have the ability to now sell your Obsidian items. That is not the case, and it's really a, a, a source of confusion, if you will. Um, I'm sure they didn't do this on purpose, but that is not the way that things are looking here on the PTS. There are changes coming to Obsidian Crafting, but the best way to explain this, in regards to selling your Obsidian item, it works exactly as it does now. I mean, that's the best way to think about it. You still must upcraft your Obsidian piece to get an unbound version. So if you're already at Tier 7, which is the last here, and you have a bound item, you are still stuck with it. That said, there is actually a new crafting process which has some different material requirements for almost all the obsidian pieces. And there is also a new step for crafting tier 5 and tier 6 obsidian, which will turn your obsidian item into a crafting component. So to do this, you need to uh, craft a new uh, item called a Spell Shift Orb. That actually takes 30 Sunset Pearls and 5 Stone Bricks. Then you upcraft your Obsidian piece 
to the next here. Then you open that item that you get and you will get a unbound version that you can sell, which is exactly the same as now. In the end, basically what we have is a system that is pretty much exactly as the same thing that we have now, but it has more steps. More mats are required, with the only benefit is that you get to unseal your, your armor, your obsidian piece, whether it's a weapon or armor, um, at tier 5 and tier 6, and basically repick the path that that item is going on. For instance, cloth items, if you wanted healer cloth versus mage cloth before, at tier 4, you locked, your, you locked the destiny in. However, in tier 5 and tier 6, you will still have that opportunity to pick a new path. However, there is no, no, nothing called resealing. You know, just get that out of your mind. Now, so, now, let me talk about the material requirements. There are some new requirements like alchemy oils that are required to craft in the higher tiers. And they've also added abyssal, re, abyssal crystal requirements in there. So, uh, and they have also increased the material, like the obsidian material mat requirements. So, it is, it is all in all, obsidian is all in all, a little harder to craft, a little more time, a little more efforts, and the only benefit that they were trying to, they were really trying to bring out with, uh, with what they were saying about resealing it, was that you can repick your path as you go. Each time you go up, you can repick your path. Uh, also, the library floor materials have actually been simplified. You probably have already heard this. There is only one type of its obsidian material per library floor, floor one, two, and three. Uh, if you have any of the older version of obsidian materials that are no longer used, all you have to do is right click them and they will be converted over to the usable obsidian material type. Next up, I want to talk about the dungeons. So the low B or the normal versions of the palace cellar in Sharpwind Mines have been removed. The dungeon has not been removed. You can still do the greater versions of these dungeons. And additionally, in these types of dungeons, you used to find what they called the beast bells, and they all had various names. Um, those drops have been simplified so every dungeon now drops the same bell. You can actually convert your old bells into the new, new version, once again, just by right-clicking it. And the amount of the new bell material that you get varies from 1 to 8, depending on the initial level and difficulty of the old dungeon. Like, so, for example, like the bells from the greater K, uh, KC dungeon convert into 8 while the ones from the old uh, easy version of the Palace Cellar or Sharpwind Mines will convert into one. Additionally, the dungeon drops like the Sun Strength Stones or the Brine Brawn Stones have been removed. These actually convert over to Abyssal Shards at different ratios. Again, once the higher level the, the stone was to get, uh, the more abyssal crisp or shards that you will get out of it. There is one caveat to this. The Miss Song Summit, the item that dropped in there, which is called a Sunset Portal Stone, is actually still very much in the game and still very much a requirement for crafting things like your Miss Song weapons and upgrading various mounts. Next up is the UI. So the user interfaces have been changed and there also are some new ones added. Actually, overall, I'm really, really loving this new uh, crafting folio UI. Navigating through it can be done just like the old way where you start typing in a, a search query, or they have like this new window style navigation where you just click on a box and it takes you to another page and you narrow down your topics as you go. It's pretty cool. Uh, additionally, items that have multiple ranks, like uh, let's say, let's look at a piece of jewelry here. You can view the additional ranks simply by 
clicking in this linear radio selection line and it will show you how many ranks it has and all you have to do is click this little bubble as you see here and it will take you to the uh, next rank or the previous rank. It makes it very easy to click through this. And it also makes it very easy so you can write down your mats that you're required to get for each tier without a whole bunch of clicking around. So two thumbs up here. There's also a new RAID UI to accommodate for uh, the joining of two RAIDs together. So if you haven't heard yet, Raids can now be up to a hundred man. So you make one raid and you make another raid and then you join them together. So yes, now 100 man raids are a thing. And the way that that is denoted here in this new UI is the first raid or the initial raid will have, you know, just like it normally looks. And then there's also another tab that you can click on for the second raid. Uh, finally, in this UI section of this video, you can now post looking for more messages for just about anything that you want with the new raid and recruit search menu. So here you can actually post a raid for anything from the Crimson Rifts to various dungeons to world boss encounters to uh, Halcyona or Missong battles. Uh, you can also request to join one of those particular postings uh, from this UI. And if you are the creator of that posting, you can actually manage the people that are applying. Another two thumbs up for this uh, new UI. And uh, even though it's probably long overdue, I, I'm really liking it. Next up is Larceny, Treasure Maps, and Sunken Treasure. So in the Larceny category, I have actually found that the drop rates on the coin purses and the crates to be pretty much exactly the same as they currently are on live. Additionally, things like the Aurorian locked metal crates or the metallic locked crates also seem to be dropping about the same amount. And uh, we're going to talk more about what's inside those locked metal crates uh, when I speak about the Lunarite here in just a moment. Uh, so I'll, next I would like to talk about the treasure maps. And uh, the first ones that I'm going to talk about are the blue ones or the rare ones. Those are dropping the new tier one Lunarite uh, at a current rate of one and a half per map. So every map that is blue, you're likely to get uh, either one or two of the new tier one Lunarites. The rare purple maps, that's the arcane versions, are dropping both the tier one Lunarite as well as the tier two Lunarite uh, that's about a 50-50 chance which one you get. And they also, of course, drop Archeum Crystals, Black Pearls, as well as the Book of Aurora. Not much has changed on those. Uh, probably still going to be very valuable, though, or somewhat valuable. Now, I also only had one of the Heroic Treasure Maps, but those are dropping uh, Archeum Essences, Books of Aurora, Black Pearls, and they exclusively drop or thus, as far as I can tell, the new Tier 2 Lunarite, which is the highest tier. Uh, and I can't confirm it, but the likely still are dropping uh, the Ionad Scrolls, which if you watch any of my past videos, it's about a 25% drop rate on those. I say that I can't confirm that because really, I like I said, I've only done one of those treasure maps on in uh, 4.0. Okay. Okay. So all the sources, both the metallic crates as well as the treasure maps, will drop either Fire Glow, Wave Glow, or as you probably already know them as Fire and Wave Lunarite, but they can also drop Copper Glow Lunarites. Uh, finally, I, I want to like to talk about the Sunken Treasure. It has been reported, and it's even stated in the Lunarite tooltips, that Sunken Treasure is a source for Lunarite. However, in my test, and uh, even the Tryon developer Quilladon uh, reported today in my live stream, that is not the case. So the Sunken Treasure Chest are currently not dropping Lunarite. So right now we are uncertain if that is just because the build that we have on PTS is old, or if it was erroneously reported that they're supposed to be dropping there. Either way, as it is now, Sunken Treasure Chest is currently
dropping exactly the same stuff it, it, as it always has. That means vault stones, shipwright bags, along with some journal entries and some vendor sellables. Okay, next up is Lunarite, and I'm going to try to explain this as quickly and to the best of, of my ability as possible. Okay, next up is Lunarite, and I'm going to try to explain this as quickly and to the best of, of my ability as possible. In the new system, there is only two tiers of Lunarite, Tier 1 and Tier 2. You can think of it like our current system, Lunarite Tier 2 and Tier 3. So basically, they're getting rid of the Tier 1 Lunarite. That's the best way to think about it. So what is going to happen with existing fire and wave lunarite? That's the basic stuff that you know now as the tier one lunarite. It will actually convert into the new lunarite, the new tier one lunarite, which is our tier two, at a ratio of 10 to one. If you have existing tier two, that is the old tier two, fire or wave lunarite, you, those are going to be automatically converted into the new Tier 1, which again is our Tier 2, at a ratio of 1 to 1. Likewise, our current, current Tier 3 Lunarite, Wave and Fire, will be converted into the new Tier 2, which is our Tier 3, Lunarite at a ratio of 1 to 1. Okay, so that is the Fire and the Wave. Now, existing Gale and Earth Lunarite, those are the green and yellow ones that you get from those dungeon drop little Lunarite bags. Uh, th those are going to convert into new Gale and Earth Glow uh, Lunarite, but at different ratios. So the basic version, it's going to take 100, yes, I said that correctly, 100 basic of our current tier one stuff to convert into the new tier one stuff. So you will need 100 basic gale or earth lunarites to get one of the new tier one. Now, if you have any of the old tier two lunarite, that will convert into the new tier one at a ratio of 10 to one. So it takes 10 of our current Tier 2 Gale or Wave Lunarite to get one of the new Tier 1. If you happen to have the old Tier 3, you can convert that into the new Tier 2 at a ratio of 1 to 1. That's Gale and Earth. So what is really important to understand about the Gale and the Earth Lunarite is that you actually need... 100 of the old uh, items in a stack to get one of the new tier ones. And when I say 100, I mean they must all be the same. So you can't have like 100 or you can't have like 50 celerity and 50 esoterics and convert that into one of the new ones. No, you have to have 100 esoterics or 100 celerities and then you can convert that into one. So my suggestion is to get stacks of 100 of the tier one Lunarites, Gale or Earth, now the green or the yellow ones now, or 10 of the tier twos, Gale or Earth now, so you can convert those into one of the new tier one Lunarites. It's very confusing, but that's the way it works. So next up, we're going to talk about the shop changes. And first up is the honor shop. So in this honor shop, you'll find pretty much all the old stuff as well as some of the new stuff. Some notable additions is the bound Synthium stones up to and including the epic Synthium stone. You'll also find green, blue, yellow, and red regray charms. Not the superior versions, but the normal ones. Also, the Droughts of Forgiveness are in there, and I will confirm, and I can confirm, that these do have a three-hour cooldown now. And if you have any of the old drought, Droughts of Forgiveness, they will be converted to the new ones. So there is absolutely no way to sidestep that three-hour cooldown. 
unless you use your pots now. Uh, also in here, the new Tier 1 Luna Gems are all no break. So there is a, a various smattering of different Luna Gems that you can buy, and all these in here are no break gems, and they cost uh, 10,000 honor points each. Uh, additionally, you can buy the Companion as well as the Adventure Growth Stones for honor. I don't know why you would do that. And there is a very cool new item called resplendent weapon as well as a resplendent armor temper this thing gives you the current max of 115 percent temper or up to 118 percent so they basically guarantee that you'll get the current max but potentially another three percent uh also the 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 new dual stat luna frost that you have uh, probably been seeing, they've been coming from the RNG boxes, and I believe they were in the loyalty store. I can't remember exactly where those were before, but those dual stat Luna Frosts that you use on your accessories and instruments are also available for honor. So also in the honor shop, you can still buy the old honor titles, and I really thought they said that they're moving these over to the Curios Metal Shop, which we'll talk more about that. But at least in this version on the test server, you can still use your honor to buy the honor titles. Next up, I'd like to talk about the vocation shop. And pretty much all this, the, all this stuff from before is still in here with a, a few new additions. Uh, the first one being is a new Archeum tree, which costs 700, or I'm sorry, 7,500 vocation or 7,500 vocation. So this is a Archeum tree that turns into uh, Archeum, just like uh, those trees that you get from the Larceny crates, but it does not require you to plant it in Aurora, nor does it require you to use mineral water. So you can plant this thing anywhere and it will grow into an Archeum producing tree, which you must then identify and harvest or chop it down for Archeum logs just as you do with the uh, larceny type trees. You can also find the old merit badge rumbling archaeum trees in the vocation shop now for 15,000 vocation. These will also produce archaeum, but uh, they are known to have the highest chance to go thunderstruck uh, with a reported thunderstruck rate of 10%. Other additions to the vocation shop include four donkeys as well as cow mounts, which are priced at 10,000 uh, vocation each. You can also finally buy a Writer's Escape reset for 5,000 vocation, and it works exactly as you think it would work. And the last shop that I would like to talk about is the Prestige Shop. Pretty much all the same stuff in there, but you'll find that the old no-break gems that you used to buy in there are gone, and they are replaced with a new... In the new system, a new Tier 2 Earth Luna Gem, which costs you 30 Prestige. Other additions to the Prestige Shop include a Black Saber Fang and the Twin Head Viper Battle Pets. And that pretty much does the end of the uh, Prestige Shop. And finally, there is one other shop that is the Curios Metal Shop. This is where you can exchange your arena tokens called curios medals for various items you can find it by clicking on the arena icon and hitting the shop button inside you'll find combat boost scrolls migration items undergarments title tokens as well as the old warrior metal instruments okay the next topic i would like to talk about is simplifications First, we've already kind of discussed how the obsidian materials are getting simplified, as well as the beast spells are being simplified. Uh, those are the ones from the dungeons that are used to craft the battle pet and the mount armor. Uh, but in that same vein, warrior medals are actually going to be gone, and they will convert into honor at one medal equals 100 honor. Additionally, merit badges are removed, and they can be converted into two Gilda Stars each. And finally, many of your food and drink buffs have been removed. This includes the spell books, the magic and melee defense pots, as well as runes and dyes. 
Uh, if you have any of these old items, you are allowed to break them down via a workbench located in Mirage Isle. You should also note if you need to convert a great many Warriors medals or merit badges like I know many people have, you'll find that the bench in Mirage Isle is a great time saver, which will allow you to convert like 10 or 100 of these items at once. I also need to point out, at least currently in this build on the PTS, you can still use these old uh, food and drink and runes and dyes, even though that you can no longer craft them. This, I hope or kind of assume, is going to change before it goes live. But if not, if you uh, want to build up an ample supply of these and they don't change it, you'll have those buffs for as long as you have those materials. And so moving right along, and we're almost done here, there is one other change that I would like to talk about, and that is the way that the cargo mechanic works. So currently the price of the cargo packs has increased from 32 gold to 49 gold in the Nuia and the Herania trade outlets, and similar changes have been happening in Auroria, although I don't have exact numbers. Uh, but the turret in values have not changed. So today, they actually talked about this in Tryon's December 1st live stream. We should also answer, why, why do we hit cargo? Why do we hit cargo? Why do we hit cargo? I, I don't, I just, I'm too scared to run it. I, I, I don't really hate it, I'm just too scared to run it. No, I think they're talking about the increased cargo prices. I, I know So, so there, there's a new feature in uh, 4.0, guys, which you're seeing right now. Uh, that is a change to the way cargo works overall. Mm -hmm. uh, if cargo is rare, the price goes up. If yep. the cargo is common, the price goes down. So Which makes complete sense. That's called an it's economy. It's supply and demand. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so, so it's not that uh, cargo has become just more expensive. If you guys are on the PTS, I'm not sure how much cargo is on there because I haven't looked just yet. But uh, in those cases, when you have more cargo being created, those yep. prices will drop. That change is part of a new supply and demand model uh, or dynamic that they're introducing in 4.0, which is basically to say if there are a bunch of uh, cargo packs in stock, the prices will be lower. However, on the PTS, we, we are as of yet unable to confirm how low they can get. I'm going to go out, out on a limb and say if they were max stocked, they would actually be lower than the 32 gold. Otherwise, there was no sense in raising the price. But that is that is just an assumption. So overall, this is actually causing a great deal of disappointment from those people that I know use trade packs as their primary source of income. And there is some discussion topics on this very subject, both on the public test server as well as the uh, general feedback forums on Tryon. Okay, before I wrap up, there, there is actually a couple things that I'd like to mention that uh, didn't really fit into any categories. First off, and this is one that I've got a lot of questions on while I do the live streams on Twitch, and that is the Ravenspine Wings. They have not, I repeat, they have not been nerfed. They still gain a five-second immunity upon summoning. However... <laughs> The Storm Duster 1000 glider, which I spoke so highly about in my Holotide video, has actually been changed. You can no longer resummon it upon environmental coll collision, which basically makes this thing, other than looking cool, uh, kind of worthless. Well, that is pretty much it for this video. If you have questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. I am going to be doing a lot of Twitch streaming as we get new builds on the PTS. And I have yet to explore some pretty big topics like the Luna Gems. Uh, and mostly, I didn't talk about that in this video, or I haven't even looked at it because it is simply not in the build that is on the test server. As I learn more and as I hear your questions, I will know what to focus on. So if you would like to support me, you can subscribe and like this video here. You can also follow me on Twitch, Twitter, as well as Patreon. So until next time, this is September saying, be well.